back with a video. I haven't put out content in a while. I'm back with some content for y'all. Uh, this is my experience purchasing a bike, Harley Davidson, from Bayside Harley Davidson of Portsmouth, Virginia. All right, so I was in the market to, you know, potentially sell my bike. I have a 2000 night train. You try to get a bike with a, a front fairing on it, road glide, street glide, so I could be more comfortable on those highway rides and those long rides and everything. So I'm like, you know, let me see what's up, man. Originally, I wanted to, you know, buy a bike cash, cheaper, and then I came across this awesome deal. It was a 2020 Street Glide Special Performance Orange, 20,000 miles for $15,000. All right, that's already a sweet price. To put the cherry on top, it's coming from a Harley Davidson dealership, and it's certified pre-owned gets no better than that people if you know harley's you know this this was not this kind of deal to pass up whatever i was going to pay cash on a bike i'm willing to put down on this one and finance it because it's the deal of a lifetime well at least i thought it was and we're going to go over why now and excuse my daughter's phone i wrote everything down on my phone uh, but i'm using my phone to record so i'm reading everything i wrote i'm just running down the, the people and what their position is so when i tell the story it's clear on who's who uh, we have Mo. Mo is a salesman at Bayside Harley. Tony. Tony is a sales manager at Bayside Harley. This is just from what I know. I could be wrong, but this is what I was told. Anthony. Anthony is a sales manager at Bayside Harley. Emil. 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 Service director from Bayside Harley. And then you have Brian is the COO. Bayside Harley. Uh, let's see here. COO, I believe, is like the, the highest highest guy. But let's get to it. I saw the ad on Facebook Marketplace for this bike. I, I contacted the salesman. The salesman wound up being Mo. I said, hey, I see this ad. It's an awesome deal. I want to see about purchasing this bike. I said, I'll put a deposit on it now because I know it's not going to last long. He said, okay, contact Tony. Tony is the sales manager. He'll be the guy that, you know, you'll be able to go ahead and put a deposit on to secure this bike. I called Tony. What's going on, Tony? How you doing? I really want this bike. I'm ready to put a deposit on it to hold it. I'm going to figure everything else out later. Okay, no problem. Put the deposit to hold it. I said, Tony, what's going on with this bike? Is everything good? Can you tell me something about the bike? Can you show me pictures? Is it, is it cosmetically good? Is every you know anything of concern? He's like, nope. He walked around the whole bike. He said the bike is good. The only thing is one rock chip on the uh, on the wheel fender, and he took a picture of the rock chip. I'm like, man, that's it. Oh, wow, that this is an awesome deal. Uh, you you want to be in the video? You can be in the video. See what's up. She got finished getting her hair done. She's playing with her friend. All right, you can finish playing. All right. All right. Uh, baby, where was I? So, uh, see, so Tony said that all it was was the rock chip on the wheel fender. So I'm like, bet. That's it? Yeah, certified pre-owned. Harley Davidson dealership. So let's give you the backstory on certified pre-owned. All right. Certified pre-owned per Harley Davidson's website ensures peace of mind knowing that you're getting a quality motorcycle that went through a 110 point inspection and has been mechanically and cosmetically reconditioned to Harley Davidson standards. That's what they advertise certified pre-owned. Can you understand why I felt like I didn't even need to go to the dealership? Like I'm gonna buy this bike and just have it shipped to me. All right.
all the paperwork, everything needed to be done. Fast forward, I paid $400, had a bike shipped to my home on an enclosed trailer. All right, let's get started here. All right, the bike showed up at my front door. The battery was not dead. We're going to get to that in a, in, a, in a minute. The delivery driver started the bike up on the trailer, backed it off the trailer. Taking delivery, Bayside Harley from VA. Bringing the bike right on down. Look at your, look at your boy. Ooh, that thing sounds good. Man. Man. Yeah, boy. in a quarter came back just to you know everything's good um i immediately noticed the check engine light was on delivery driver was like oh sometimes when you put it in tow mode that happens blah blah, blah. i'm like all right cool it's no big deal and so he cleared the check engine light using the buttons on the handlebars however he did that okay check engine light is out cool all right we good we good i didn't even really get a chance to really nitpick over the bike at this time because i'm already like wow got a problem already so he low he closes the trailer up i told him where to get a philly cheese steak from and he went on about his way well i rode around a block with my bike the check engine light came back on blake along with the check engine light on so i'm like oh man something's wrong here because if it wasn't the check engine light wouldn't have came back on so I come to the back of my house, and I go to put the kickstand down, lock the handlebars out to the left. That's kind of what you normally do when you put the kickstand down. You turn the handlebars to the left. You're good to go. I notice when I turn the handlebars all the way to the left to lock out, everything on the dash cut out. Like the screen turned black. The gauges like flashed and just like... Went all the way to the end, came back, and, and died. Everything died. Every Everything on the dash is shut off. Oh, I'm like, man, that's weird. So I go to turn the handlebars back, and everything cut back on. The the All the gauges cycle through. The, all the lights on the dash come on. The screen comes back on. I'm like, is this normal? What, like when you go to park it, put your kickstand down, the, the dash cuts off, whatever? So my dad has the same bike. I'm like, yo, does your bike, bike do this? He's like, nah. So I'm like... All right. All right, this is a video. All right, now it's on. You can see it's in neutral, and it happens it happens when I'm in drive as well. I don't even have to turn it on for it to happen. I'm going to turn the steering wheel all the way. To, I'm going to turn the handlebars, rather, lock out to the left. Everything dies. All right. When I bring the steering wheel back up, everything cuts back on. The slightest movement of turning it back to the right, bring it back to the left, everything dies again. And then once I press slightly to straighten it back up, everything turns back on. All right, now the handlebars are straight. I'm going to lock out to the right. Stays on. Straighten it back out. I'm gonna lock out to the left. Everything cuts off. There you go. Everything shut off. The screen shut off next. And that's when I lock the handlebar out to the left. Now, once I turn the handlebar back, everything's gonna cut back on. Let me see. Oh, straighten it out. Boom. Everything in the dash resets. So I call Mo immediately. Since he was a salesman, I'm like, hey, Mo, he's got this bike. Check engine light is on, and it's an electrical problem. When I lock out the handlebars to the left, 
the whole dash cuts off when I turn it back and everything cuts back on. Um, let's see. Um, he puts Anthony, the sales manager, on the phone. And uh, I tell Anthony what's going on. I'm like, hey, the uh, check engine light is on. He was like, oh, yeah, that probably happens when the battery dies on him. You know, the check engine light I said the battery wasn't dead. He started it right up while I was on the trailer. And he's like, oh, well, yeah, you can see we can get you one of our service guys um, to see about showing you how to reset the check engine light. And I said, the delivery driver already reset the check engine light using the handlebars. And then I went around a block and the check engine light came back on. And he's like, oh, well, you might have to just take it to your local Harley dealership and then have them use the machine to turn the check engine light off. And I'm like, well, it's probably a reason why the check engine light is on because you tried to say something about a dead battery that wasn't the case. Like, I, so I got to buy a bike from you guys and immediately take it to another dealer to figure out why the check engine light is on. Um, so that, that kind of... Uh, rub me the wrong way a little bit. And then the next doozy, this is the big one here that, that kind of made me feel very frustrated. I said on top of that, when I turn my handlebars all the way to the left, the dash cuts off. And... I don't know, maybe tell me if I'm wrong for being frustrated with, with his response. I said, when I lock the handlebars out to the left, everything on the dash cuts off. The screen, the gauges, everything turns black. When I, when I turn it from lock out to the left and straighten them out or turn it to the right or whatever, everything turns back on and stays on. His response was, let us know if it happens again. I told him it's going to happen again. It happened every time I did it. It's consistent. It's not supposed to happen at all. So now I'm already getting frustrated. I said, you know what? Let me, go to, let me talk to the manager who I've been dealing with. Let me call Tony. I said, Tony, yo, man, this, this bike got a lot of problems. I'm going to need you to come get this bike, man. He's like, oh, well, we can either, you can either take it to your local Harley dealer. They can fix everything, and then we can send them the bill or... You know, I can see about having our guy come pick it back up. And I'm like, man, if your guy not too far, he can come pick it back up right now. Like, I, don't, I, want, I want this. And then I told him, I don't want to take it to my, to my local Harley dealer because they're not going to understand where I'm coming from. They're not going to treat this situation with a level of, of priority like you guys would, being as though you just sold me this bike. That bike's going to sit there until they get ready to get around to it. They don't care about my situation and what I'm going through. They said, okay, let me see what I can do. Long story short, he got the bike picked up the next day. Now, this bike was delivered January 31st. I made the purchase a few days before that, maybe like January the 27th or something like that, 28th, something around there. I actually gave them my money, and then they was finding a day where they can get a delivery driver to get it to my house. So it was delivered January 31st. February 1st, he had his driver come back and um pick the bike up but let me all right so let's get to the condition of the bike when i received it mind you this is coming from a harley davidson dealership on an enclosed trailer and it's certified pre-owned all right the bike was filthy it wasn't even hand wash like and there will be a video at the end of this video attached to it that you can see the actual bike the bike was dirty it wasn't even washed at all um i'm like man like, i'm taking delivery of this bike from a dealer they, they can't even wash it um it was bug splatter on the bike it was like somebody drove this twenty thousand miles never wash it and they just gave it right to me tons of brake dust on the rims the rims were they're supposed to be gloss black it was flat black and i could take my finger and like wipe the brake dust off and I could, you know you want to see that on the video that's attached to hair um tons of rock chips on the front forks and like i said that's something that could be considered normal wear and tear when i when i did research on it they were saying the black forks tend to get those rock chips because it's just painted or whatever but like i said that's something that that it was very obvious when you look at it so when i asked the the you know 
And I asked Tony, you know, the, the condition of the bike, what does it look like? That's something that he could have just, you know, told me. I could have decided whether that was something I was cool with or not. But that would be something that I would like to have known. Like, hey, it's a bunch of rock splatter chips all on the front forks. This is black and the rock chips come up white. So it's very obvious. I wasn't aware of it. That was the thing. Um, the front rim was chipped and peeling. So the black finish on the rim, it looked like a spot on there. Just the black finish is totally off and it's actually like flaking. It's, um, it's flaking off. So it wasn't like curb rash. It's just like the black finish is just peeling and flaking off. I wasn't aware of that. Uh, under the seat was caked with dirt you'll see in the video when I took the seat off it was just extremely covered in, in, in like caked up dirt uh, the frame was caked with dirt paint was scuffed up all over the bike could have been buffed and polished out so like I said this is something that you know some people will say ah whatever whatever but when you when you say something is certified pre-owned I expect it to be at the highest standard like if I buy a used car and this bike was on the showroom floor if I buy a used car from the showroom floor, normally it's clean, you know what I mean, it's washed, it's detailed, they, the ones that just sit outside, sometimes they'll be dirty, they didn't get the cleaning yet, but if this is inside the store, it, you know what I mean, this should be clean at least, like, and then the whole buffing and polishing, this bike had so many scuffs on it that was, like, that was obvious, like, man, like, a detailed, you can just buff this out really fast and make it look like glass again, like, it's not, these scuffs can easily have been remedied to make someone feel like man i'm getting this is like you know had a googly eyes and like oh when i received my bike man this is perfect instead of being like man it's all scuffed up like i gotta take it to a detail shop right after i get it the usb door um on the on the fairing is a usb door you pop the door open it has your usb so you can charge your phone toss your phone in there or whatever that door does not secure shut you can press it it's supposed to click and lock shut until you press it again you can press it all you want whatever it does that door will just flop right open you hit a bump and lose everything that's in there so that was broken when i received the bike um Um, the back brakes were severely low. So at this point, I'm like, man, let me check over this bike and see what else is wrong so I know what to tell the dealership what's wrong with the bike so they can fix it. So I took the saddlebag off, look at the back brakes, and it was like that much pad left on the brake. I'm like, Yo, how are you sell me a bike like this? This is this not even going to last through riding season. Like, I'm going to have to change my brakes in the middle of riding season, depending on how much I ride. Like, this, this simple stuff. I couldn't just throw some brakes on there. But the 110-point inspection, along with the 20K mile inspection, would have picked that up and fixed it. So I'm 100% convinced that the 20K mile service was not done on this bike because checking the brakes was one of the check marks i'm 100 percent convinced that the 110 point inspection to be certified pre-owned was not done because the back brakes are so you know what i mean and that not only that that 20k mile service and that and that certified pre-owned 110 um, point inspection it would have saw the check engine light was on and it would have saw that the electrical problem when you lock the bars out to the left when everyone parks the bike they lock the bars out to the left put the kickstand down that, that should have been very obvious like it, you know what i mean so none of these checks were done with this bike an overview of the bike the bike in my in my opinion was neglected by the owner this was not a real true harley davidson owner all the black finish on the primary everything it was so dull and like it was sat outside like his bike is only like three years old like it shouldn't be so dull and corroded looking you know i'm like man like you know i was i was already committed to you know polishing and doing whatever i had to do to bring it back to life to my standards when you would say harley davidson certified pre owned standards well let's keep on going here yeah the back brakes were so low wouldn't pass inspection the front brakes were they were good it's probably about like half life maybe I mean, I'm pretty sure they would have passed inspection, but those back brakes, you, you sold me a bike that won't even pass inspection. I believe the inspection was going to be up in, like, April. 
So now, if I did have to go get an inspected, I got to spend more money, even though I just bought a certified pre-owned. The clutch, the clutch lever was worn. I guess whoever had it had the little like clasp attached to the clutch lever, and it was like metal clasp just rotating on it. The clutch lever had like all this abnormal wear. Like for someone's hands or gloves being on there, that, that's not normal wear and tear. You would think that would be something that they would recondition. Oh, then on top of that, I paid thirteen hundred dollars reconditioning fee. On top of the price of the bike, the taxes, the dock fees, the registry. So that $1,300 I paid to recondition the bike, and all they did was put some new tires on it. That's it. Um, it smelled like oil burning when the bike was running, and it wasn't even running that long. Like, you know, as soon as the bike started getting warmed up, I'm like, man, I smell gear oil, engine oil. Like, damn, like this, I just received this bike on an enclosed trailer, certified pre owned. Like, well, why am I smelling all this oil burning? I don't know if they splash something or what. Um, Clunking noise coming from the front rotor when stopping with the front brakes. I did a little research on that, and it appears that those front rotors, they consider floating rotors, but they have um, hat spacers and these springs that go with the bolts that bolt the rotor to the to the mountain surface. And um, I saw a video where if you grab the rotor and it clunks, 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 like, it, you know, if you... You know, when you're stopping and it clunks one way and then you go back and then it clunks back, um, that's a sign that's consistent with um, that hardware needing to be replaced. Some of those springs probably broken, the hat spacer is out of spec. So uh, after doing my research, I kind of realized that that's more than likely what the issue was with the clunking noise um, going back and forth using the brakes. Probably wasn't the, the uh, forks. Um, the front forks. Other than the Rock Chips cosmetic, I didn't, I wasn't aware of. It was this large scrape on the side, the outsides. So the front forks, the outside of the fork, it was like something was digging into the side of it. It, it scraped the black finish right off, and it's digging into the into the metal. That's not normal wear and tear. That's not supposed to happen. Uh, I was convinced that the, the front forks were neglected and, and not rebuilt when it was supposed to be. Something was going on with those front forks. Like this this bike was just not taken care of. The speaker covers didn't match. So it looked like the dealership put a brand new speaker cover on the left side. And the speaker cover on the right side looked like it was sitting outside um, in Alaska for like uh, the three years. Of the, you know. It was like gray and corroded looking. I'm like, man, this is certified pre-owned. Like, I pay you thirteen thirteen hundred reconditioning fee. Like, where did that money go? In, like, in your pocket? Um, like I said, this is small stuff. But when they describe certified pre-owned as cosmetically up to standard, and I'm on top of that, I'm paying thirteen hundred dollars reconditioning fee on top of it being certified pre-owned. You would think these little small stuff they can pull off the shelf and just make the bike look good, you know, like, you know, I'm very particular about my stuff, like, you know, I'm, you know, um, gray, corroded, the exhaust was rattling around, like, when I'm sitting there idling, it's like, I'm like, bro, they couldn't tighten up the heat shield, I don't even know what's rattling, something's rattling, I was advised the 20k mile service was done prior to taking delivery. Oh, the fuel tank had a couple deep scratches on it. Like I said, when I asked, you know, the condition of the bike, if you want to look over the bike and send me pictures, uh, look, I'm not, you know, people could say, oh, you should have went down there and, and saw it. Yeah, like all, the, 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 like this stuff is not the biggest deal in the world, but it's just I'm informing. Like if you was to ask a salesman there, hey, you know, what's the condition of the bike? Just know if you drive five, six hours there, it could possibly be different than what they told you because you know it was two large deep scratches in the tank that couldn't be buffed out that would have to be repainted that i wasn't aware of like i said it is what it is a used bike but i wasn't aware of it when i'm asking you know so i can't trust you know word i have to go see it for myself at this well i won't be dealing with this dealership anymore but um two large scrapes in the tank um and then there was another like mark on the tank that could have been buffed out but it's just showing the neglect of, of, the, of this bike the crash bar had a large scrape on the side and some like gooey stuff next to it. Like it was, the crash bar is black. It's a big scrape that's silver. Like that's that's very obvious. Um, they didn't care about that. The docking hardware was rusted out.
and the manager Tony told me that they found out it's not even the original Harley Davidson dock and hardware. So CPO was like, it can't be CPO if there's like a lot of aftermarket stuff on it. So I don't know if that's enough to make it not be classified as CPO, but they had it as CPO, certified pre-owned. Um, you'll see all this stuff I mentioned in the video. The screws are rusty and everything. It's like just attention to detail is the kind of things that like real Harley Davidson owners, we take pride in our stuff. Like that's not happening. I'll change some screws out, do whatever I need to do. February 1st, uh, Tony, Tony was a pleasure to deal with. Apparently he's not working there anymore. Go figure, that's my luck. But he was the one that was willing to say, let's make this right. This should, you shouldn't have received the bike in that condition. These are all simple things that should have been addressed before you got the bike. So at least he acknowledged how I was feeling about getting a certified pre-owned bike in this condition. All right. I spoke to Mo the next day after it was sent back. Just trying to, you know, get everybody caught up to speed on what's going on. And, and he advised me. He was like, um, I'm with a customer. I have to give them the same courtesy I gave you. I had to call you back. And I'm just like, just the way that he talked to me, it was like, dude, like, you're not my concern anymore. I'm over and done with that. Like, you know what I mean? I understand you were the customer, but the way he made me felt as a consumer that just spent all this money and got this, it was like, get out of here, dude. Like, I, you know what I mean? I'm with somebody else right now. This is my, you know, I'm like, damn, only if that customer knew what I'm going through right now, they probably wouldn't even buy a bike from you. But, um, he, you know, he never called me back. So... Never called me back. At this time, I called Tony, and I told Tony, hey, listen, man, I just want to work with you and only you. If you can be my contact, man, I don't want so many hands in the pot. I want to talk to one person. That way we're all on the same page. There's no confusion. He said, okay. I stayed in contact with Tony throughout this whole process. I advised Tony of all the issues. I sent it to him in the test message. I um, wrote him down on a piece of paper to give to the delivery driver that was taking it back. And I sent the delivery driver a screenshot of the list of issues. <laughs> with the bike, that way there's no confusion. I also bought some Reinhardt slip-ons. And I told him, you know, he, he tossed them on the delivery truck on the trailer back and said, so you know, once they all fix the bike up, he tossed these slip-ons for me. Cool, no problem. Well, I'm going to have to sell them now. Put them on Facebook Marketplace. We'll get to that in a minute. All right. Uh, so I stayed in contact with Tony. Tony advised that they will address all the problems. I spoke to Tony the next week, which should be the week of February 5th, 2024. He advised that the new black lower forks in, 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 um, will be at the dealer either Saturday, um, 2, 210, or Tuesday, the latest at 213, February 13th. Twenty twenty four. So initially they said we're going to rebuild the front forks for you, and I was like, hey, is there any way we can get those, you know, those lowers? I mean, the scraped up there, artist. And he was like, all right, I see what I can do. And then he said, we're going to get you some new lowers, some black lowers. They're going to rebuild because first he was saying they're going to rebuild the forks. It was okay. So the forks needed to be rebuilt when you gave me the bike. Now that I'm sending it to you back, and you're going to rebuild the forks. Um, so they're going to get the new lowers. And he's like, hey, as far as I know, everything else is done. They got the clutch lever on there, the speaker cover, you know. I'm like, you check engine light down? He's like, yeah, as far as I know, the, the electrical issue, you know, we're going to take care of everything. we just waiting for the lowers. Um, you know, so let's keep going here. So I'm like, okay, cool. So the latest Tuesday, we should have those lowered. I call on Tuesday. Everything was done. He said they fixed the rim. They put new brakes on it, the clutch lever, the speaker cover, cleaned the bike, docking hardware. It's not Harley, so they'll replace that. The USB door will be fixed, and whatever's left will be addressed. All right, um... 
So Tuesday came. All right, that's when the lower is supposed to be here. As far as I know, the bike's supposed to be pretty much good to go. I get my lowers. And I'm, I'm trying to get my bike back. You know, I'm trying to get my bike back this week. You know what I mean? My, you know, my bike will be gone for two whole weeks, and I'm going to get it back, and we'll be good to go. That's pretty much where I'm at with it. So when I reached out to Tony on Tuesday, he sent me a text saying he's someone from the dealership will call me. Like, what? All right, man. Here we go, man. Here we go. He doesn't work there anymore. Somebody will call me. He sent me a text. Like, if somebody don't call you in the next 15 minutes, call me, text me back. We'll make sure someone reach out to you. Well, I gave it a half an hour. Nobody called me. So I reached out to Tony. Like, Tony, nobody called me. He's like, yeah, man. All right, I'll reach back out. He's like, I'm sorry, man. I don't work there anymore. You know, I left on good terms or whatever. But you want to have somebody there take over, and they're going to make sure that you're good. I'm like, okay. Uh, shortly later, a, sell, a service advisor. And this is February the 13th when I thought the forks were going to be there. And, you know, mind you, my bike has been there since February 1st. No, this is February 13th. This is going on. So my bike's been at that dealer for 13 days when they had the list of issues with the bike on February 1st. And it's been there for 13 days. So feel my frustration a little bit. So on the 13th, the person that's supposed to be taking over is a service advisor named Donovan. Donovan, the service rider, called me. Very unprofessional. His attitude was just totally disgusting. Like, Going through what I've been going through, you would think that people would kind of, you know, be trying to, trying to, work, you know, work, you know, we understand, we'll, we'll, we'll apologize, bang, bang, bang. Nope. This dude did not give a rat's behind about me, what I was going through, or anything. And I had my father on the phone as well, and his attitude was 0% customer service friendly. I don't know, like, if Harley Davidson Corporate can get the phone call and hear it. Like, it, it was very disgusting. Um, so he said, I'm just asking, like, what's the status of the bike? You know, last I heard, the forks were supposed to be here today, and everything else is pretty much getting done. And he's like, uh, I don't know what's going on with your bike. And I'm like, my bike's been there for 13 days. Like, there's no, you don't have any update, and I don't know what's going on with your bike. Um, and then my father's like, well, can you can you let us know by tomorrow? You know, we, we you know we trying to figure out what's going on here. And he said, I don't know. When I'll have answers, I can't promise anything with his unprofessional attitude. He acted like I was annoying him, just trying to figure out what's going on with my bike. He said he doesn't know anything, and he has to find out and and um, and get to me. He doesn't know when he can give me any answers. And when we ask, well, reasonably, would you think it would be reasonable to have answers tomorrow? You know, something like that. Because as far as I know, Tony was saying that the person that called me, i.e. you, was the one that was going to catch me up to speed on what's going on with the bike. I told him my bike been there for about 13, 14 days now. Like, nobody has answers? And he was like, well, I don't know if I can get to you tomorrow. Um, he said it could be tomorrow, it could be Friday, until he can have answers for me. Yeah, this is this is how he's talking. All right. Um, he talked to us like our money wasn't worth anything, time wasn't worth anything, the stuff that we're going through. So this guy that's supposed to catch me up to speed... Um, pretty much is telling me, bro, I, I'll get back to you when I get back to you. You know, I don't know what's going on with your bike. It could be tomorrow. It could be Friday. I don't know. I'll figure it out, and then I can call you back. That's it. At this point, the way he was talking to us and the fact that you have no update when you're supposed to be the guy to update me and pick up where Tony left off, I asked to speak to a manager. So I said, hey, listen, man, I don't like the way you're talking to us. I want to speak to a manager. And what they always say, oh, there's no manager available. Okay. Can you have a manager call me back then at his earliest convenience? So now we get to the service manager, which I found out was the service director, Mr. Amil, Amil, A-M-I-L. He called me back. I spoke to him about the issues, told him the whole backstory. He said that, oh, I wasn't even aware of all the issues with this bike. 
you're the service director my bike been there for 13 days and you're still not aware of what's going on with this bike what's been going on with my bike at this dealership for 13 days is this something that's being swept under the rug trying to be pushed behind scenes like that you guys sold me a certified pre-owned bike in this condition like now i'm getting kind of annoyed because i'm like okay so nobody knows what's going on with my bike okay he said he would look into everything and give me an update tomorrow. He had a better attitude and assured that we would get this figured out. My bike been there for 13 days. Well, actually, like 14 days, whatever you want to say. It's been there since the February 1st uh, with no answers or updates. The bike should have been back in my possession by now if, if you be talking about being reasonable. I would say, you know, I would say now this situation is unreasonable. Well, actually... Uh, reasonable is buying a certified pre-owned bike and not having to go through any of this is really what reasonable is that's why it's called certified pre-owned so at this point I call Harley Davidson corporate they advise they would get it well for the, the lady at Harley Davidson corporate when I'm telling her the whole story um, she's like wow like, she's like appalled she's amazed um, advised them they said they would get it escalated to a manager I, re I should receive a call within three business days this is the 13th i should receive a call back in three business days what's today's date this is today is the 19th and i still have not received a call back from harley davidson corporate so now i'm under the impression that they can care less either um so the next day which should be the 14th Instead of Amol kind of taking over and, and getting back to me, like, you know, I was under the impression uh, Amol, the service director, now he's he's going to be in charge make sure everything is taken care of. On the 14th, Anthony, the sales manager, called me and said that the COO, which I believe is like, I guess, the top guy at the Harley-Davidson dealership, the COO advised they would either fix, they would fix the issues that's on the list that they had from Tony or they can give me my money back. Now, I sent, I told Amo that previous day all the issues, the whole list. Um, and then um, he said they can either fix all the stuff on the list or they can give me my money back. Um, so, rewind for a quick second. I asked Tony when I first started going through all this, yo, is it a possibility that I can just get my money back? And he's like, oh, that never happened before. If anything, we can try to trade you into another bike. But now we're at the moment where, you know, I am able to get my money back or they'll fix the issues that I told Tony. Um, which is, which, and then, so at this point, I'm like, I text Amo, like, oh, Amo, the issues that I told Tony is the same exact issues that I gave you, so I don't know why this conversation of, we'll fix with, with the, the list that Tony had, or we'll give you the bike back, so I just wanted to be clear that these are all the same issues, but Anthony showed me screenshots of the list of stuff that I gave Tony, and, like, screenshots were missing, he sent me two screenshots of problems, and I'm like, that's nowhere near the amount of test. I had the test messages on my phone. Like, if you want, I can show you all the test messages of me and Tony communicating about all the issues with the bike. So I don't don't try to make it seem like because Tony left now, I'm trying to get more stuff done. Those that list that you have is anemic compared to the actual stuff that I I, I needed to be addressed. Um. So. Uh, they were not fixed. So these so there's certain things. They were not fixed. They said he gave me the list of stuff that they said they will be able to fix, or I'll give my money back. They would not fix the back brakes, which were extremely low, would not pass inspection. The rusted aftermarket docking hardware, the clunking noise on the front rotor, the rattling noise on the exhaust, and the oil burning smell will not be addressed because the COO Brian said that at that point they'll be losing too much money on the bike. Um, so that means I'm supposed to buy a certified pre-owned bike from a Harley dealer and spend my own money to fix the remaining issues um, after I get it because they priced it too aggressive. Um, that's, that's That shouldn't be a thing. Um, I advised Anthony that those problems were, and they were the same problems that I told Tony about. Like, how you going to give me a bike with the back brake so extremely low and the front hardware on the rotor need to be replaced and it's certified pre-owned because you feel like you priced the bike too low and now you're going to be losing too much money. That's not my problem. Like, you sold me the bike. Once you classify it as certified pre-owned, it's just supposed to meet a certain criteria. What's up? Daddy. Hmm? My hands hurt. Can what? you unlock your car? Just go in the house. Yeah. You want to go in the house? No. Unlock my car for what? I want to go into your car. I don't have my keys on my keys in the house. Go in the house and get my keys off the table. 
Which table? Dude, what's up? You gotta get your hair fixed, girl. Which table? Right there, the counter, as long as you walk in. <laughs> Stop being silly. Do you still have your gloves on? No. All right, just give me one second. Let me, let me finish this, all right? Please. And I need to go to the bathroom. Just go on up. One second, please. Let's get back to it. Uh, and I said these issues shouldn't be present at all if it was a certified pre-owned bike. I'm talking to Anthony. You know, the bike was not sold, used, as is. Because if it was sold, used, as is, none of this would be a thing. Like, it's on me. If I didn't go see the bike, that's on me. If it got... You know, well, my thing is the thirteen hundred dollar reconditioning fee that I paid the dealer. I could have took that thirteen hundred and pretty much handled the majority of these issues. You know what I mean? Like, but I said I also wanted to make sure. So now I'm talking to Anthony. Okay, you saying what you will and will not do? I want to make sure that you know that 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 twenty k mile service is one of the things that he included in what they would do. So I said I want to make sure that twenty k mile service is done because it obviously wasn't given the issues as with the bike. And Anthony advised his service guy says that the, that the 20k mile service is done, and he said it only entails just changing all three holes pretty much. And I'm like, that's a negative. If you look in the manual, the 20k mile service is like the largest service for this bike, and every box to be checked off is checked off to be checked, inspected, lubed, all this stuff. So now, like, I'm under the impression that this Harley Davidson dealer service department has no clue what a 20k mile service is when they have the resources available to know what it is like i told him that's wrong there's a lot more than just a three-hole service you know which is like the primary trans the, the engine oil being changed whatever filter whatever like that um like i said per the harley manual you can see in there um and i was advised that the 20k mile service was done before i even got the bike by tony which obviously was a lie being though that you know the issues the brakes and everything so I asked them, if I took the option to get my money back, will I get every penny that I spent? Registration, the delivery, and all that. Um, he said he would find out and get back to me. And I advised him, I can't even make a decision if I want my money back or keep the bike because no one can tell me what's going on with the bike. Now it's been there 15 days. Like, do you know what's going on with the bike? Ah, oh, no, I still got to be, still got to figure out. I got to look. Yo, how has my bike been here for 15 days? And I didn't talk to three, four people. Nobody knows what's going on with the bike. And I pay for it already. I'm paying for insurance. I'm paying a monthly payment. Like put like, my down payment. I gave y'all everything y'all asked for. And y'all can't give me nothing in return. Like this is getting crazy. I said, how can I even make a decision if I want if I want my money back or not? You can't even tell me what's going on with the bike. So I'm under the impression that nothing's done to the bike because you can't tell me anything. Uh, so Anthony said he would get back to me. Yeah. Cl close the door, Tori. Anthony said he would get back to me. Um, with any updates, he still doesn't know the status or what's going on with the bike. <laughs> he said he would get his personal detailer to clean the bike since they don't have a detail Did you unlock it? at this dealership. So it was explained to me that this dealership was the highest, one of the highest volume dealerships on the East Coast. They do not Mommy? have a detail section. They don't have Mommy? part of the shop that cleans the bikes, details them. Like, how you the highest volume? You don't even have things in place to... Just clean the bike. He got to get his personal dude that, that cleans his car, he said. Like, anyway, the next day, which would be the 15th, now, now, now I'm thinking, okay, Anthony's going to be the point man now. He's calling me with Anthony. You know, so I am keep getting tossed around to different people. You know what I mean? So the next day, the 15th, I reached out to Anthony, you know, to, to try to see, like, you know, get some kind of update what's going on. He didn't answer, but he sent me a text saying, I'll be away for a week, and and my contact will be Mr. Emil for anything further. My man, you I just talked to you yesterday. Now you're going to be away for a week, and I got to call, call this other guy, Emil. Emil was the guy that just act like he was going to make things right. And then he wasn't answering my phone call when I called him back. All right, this story is just getting better and better. So... I, um... Uh, Daddy? Yeah? Your car is locked. Hmm. Go ahead. 
So now he pretty much flaked on me. I, I can't talk to him about anything. When he said he was going to find out what's going on with the bike and let me know, now he won't even answer my call. He sent me a text saying I'll be going for a week. Call Amel. <sighs> now I'm, I'm very frustrated. Thought he was going to be my go-to contact, just like I thought Amel was. He was acting like he was going to take care of everything. So I called Amel, and he said, this is not my problem. This is a sales problem. He's the service director. I called him and I said, hey, Anthony told me to call you because he's going to be gone for a week. I'm trying to see what's going on with my bike. I've been there 15, 16 days and nobody still has answers. I mean, you're the service service director. Like, the bike is at your service department. I'm trying to get some answers. What's going on with my bike getting fixed? And his response was, this is not my problem. This is a sales problem. And I don't know what's going on with the bike with an attitude. Here we go again. At this time, since Anthony told me the day prior that the COO Brian said that I have the option of getting my money back, I'm like, okay. I called the dealership. I said, I want to speak to the COO Brian. You know what I mean? Um, I don't even want to see if they will fix the bike at this point. I'm, I'm talking to Brian now. I said, it's been there for two weeks and no one knows anything. So I called the dealership. I asked to speak to Mr. Brian, the COO, and I told him, "Hey, I, I was aware of you know your offer of giving me my money back. At this point, I just want to take the offer, get my money back. Um, my bike's been there for two weeks. No one knows anything. Meanwhile, they have my money, and I paid for insurance and everything else. They ran my credit, everything, all this stuff that I did to get this bike." He said he apologizes, and the most he can do to make it right is apologize and give me my money back. That's the most he can do to make this situation right. Okay, uh, so I called him back a few hours later. He advised they're in the process of refunding my money. Um, he will see if there's anything he can do as far as like um, switching the orange over to another bike that's good to go. That way, because I can still have a performance orange on a different bike, and he's gonna see about giving me the same price. That was like five days ago. Didn't make it a priority. Uh, you know what I mean? He, he, I'm, I'm convinced that they, they really don't care because it don't take that long to look at your inventory and see if you got a bike you can throw that orange stuff on and go ahead and, and I'll, I'll buy a I'll buy bike, you know, again for the same price. <sighs> He'll get back to me on any further, bang, bang, bang. He never got back to me. Every time I talk to this, I'm calling him. I'm leaving a message. Wait, you know, he's never reaching out to me like this is a priority. Like we need to make this right. Hey, Mr. Harley, this is such and such. And such. Um, 16, February 16, I waited an entire day to receive a phone call back to get an update on my refund or if he can do something with another bike. Never received a phone call. Four days, like three, four, five days go by. You can't see the check in inventory to see if you can swap the orange over to another bike. You use it every time I talk to you, oh, I'm still looking into it. Then you're not making it a priority. No one has done anything to make this situation right for me at all. And giving me my money back is what they wanted to do this whole time. That's why they kept stalling. Daddy, That's why they kept, hmm? Um, didn't you say we was going to go to the park? Yeah, we can go. I'm about to be finished this now, all right? Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, want to give me a kiss? Mm, thank you. So, they wanted to get my money back, so they off the hook. And they probably just sell the bike as is for the same price. All right, February 19th, 2024. Um, this is after, it's about five days after Brian, the general manager, COO, whatever you want to call him. It's about five days after he told me, okay, we'll give you your money back and I'll look for a new bike. Well, I'll look for a used bike with some of the miles to swap all the orange stuff over to to see if we can sell it to you for the same price. Five days later, none of that ha has happened. All right, so finally... On the 19th, he's like, all right, yeah, we want to get you this money back. We want to get you your 7000 back so we can move on. And I'm like, what about the 400 and He's like, oh, someone said they refunded you the $400. And I tell him, no, I was never refunded the $400. Um, so he tells me, if you could send me bank record, a documentation that we never refunded you $400, then uh, we shouldn't have a problem just adding that $400 to your refund. And I'm thinking, like, you should be able to, fact check your finance department to see that I was never refunded four hundred dollars. Instead you inconvenienced me now I had to go through my bank records and send you bank records showing that I wasn't refunded four hundred dollars. 
So I asked him, okay, I don't have a problem doing that. I just want to get my money. Um, I just want a confirmation after I send you this documentation that we're all good for the 7400 He said, okay. So with that being said, any reasonable person would think, I'll send him the stuff. He'll confirm, okay, yep, that's confirmation. We're good for the $7,400. Well, that's not what happened. Right after we got off the phone, I, I sent him the documents immediately because he, he playing with my money now. When I hurry up and get this situated, send him the documents immediately. And then I s sent him an email right 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 after that saying, "Are we good for the seventy four hundred?" And um, no response. So at that point, I called the dealership and I'm like, "Hey, can I speak to, to Mr. Brian, the general manager, the COO, or?" You know, and they saying, oh, hold on, let me check. And then they said, oh, oh, he left for the day. So I don't know. That, that's kind of weird because I thought we just had a conversation saying that, you know, I would like confirmation. And you just ask me to send you something, but then you leave. Don't respond to my emails. Don't respond to my phone calls. Like, that's that's not a good business. Like, you asked me to send you something and then leave, and now you don't respond to me. All right, so the next day, February 20th, 2024, I call the dealership there for him again, right? I leave messages for him. I'm calling, I'm calling him. Yo, what's going on? Like, what happened? Where's the disconnect at? I'm just trying to get my money. He's not answering. He's not returning my voicemails. I tell him, I'm telling him to leave a note. They said they're going to leave a note on his desk. All this stuff they said they're going to do. And I'm sending him emails as well. Like, hey, sir, are we good? Like, can you give me a call, please? Listen, no answer. Nothing at all. So now he just flaked on me. So not only did he not do what he said he was going to do, now he's not even answering my calls, returning my phone calls or my emails. So the 21st I talked to, I believe, I think it was Jerome, uh, somebody else. At this point, they're saying, all right, yeah, we're going to refund you the $7,400. Today, on February 21st, 2024, we're going to refund you the 7400 So at some point, I guess, the 7400 was approved, but no one ever said anything to me. So I don't know if Brian told somebody else, just give him the 7400 back, but never responded to my emails or my phone calls. Like So that, that's kind of weird, but okay, we had the 7400 I'm cool with that. They also said they want to mail out the payoff check to Harley-Davidson Financial, to pay my loan off that's in my name. So, okay, that's the 21st of February, 2024. All right, this should have been done five days ago, but okay, we're getting it done. The 21st, now I'm seeing a pending return on my credit card for the 7400 I'm like, okay, cool. And as far as I know, the check is being mailed out. I was told by, I believe it was Jerome, whoever the employee was, that the finance lady said I should receive that money by that Friday. So the 21st, I believe, was Wednesday. So they said by Friday I should have the money. But it was pending the Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Still pending. Still didn't get the money. Um, I'm calling on Friday. I'm talking to, uh, I believe at this point, I'm talking to Brian. Brian, No, not Brian. Uh, D uh, Dave. Diamond Dave is his nickname. Dave is another general manager. I'm like, hey. I was told I was going to get my money on Friday. You know, it's not. He was like, all right, yeah, just just give it some time. I called my bank. I told my bank, hey, the merchant said I was supposed to get my refund on Friday. They're like, oh, just give it a couple more business days. And as far as when I'm talking to Dave, he's he's consistently telling me, yeah, everything is good. The money, the money is refunded to you. The money left the account and all this other stuff. So, all right. The only problem was come the, the, the uh, 26th, I believe it was. I believe it was that Monday, the pending return now dropped off on my credit card. It's not even showing a pending return anymore. So that concerned me because I'm like, yo, what happened to my refund? So I called Dave again. I'm like, yo, Dave, this, this pending return just dropped off. He's like, oh, I've had that happen sometimes where, you know, it drops off and then it'll just pop up and show on there. I'm like, nah, like I talked to my bank and, and, and the Visa people saying that, no, they're not showing any return. They're not showing any pending return. The Visa department, well, my card is saying 
that if it shows pending return and it doesn't go to post it, which means now I have the money, that means either the merchant canceled the, re the, the return or they didn't have the funds. They didn't give the funds to be posted to my account. So I'm trying to explain this to Dave because my credit card company is explaining this to me and he keeps telling me, no, the, the, the money left our account. So there's nothing we could do at this point. The money left our account. And he's like, at this point, any other dealership wouldn't even speak to you anymore. Once, once the money leaves our account, there's nothing we can do. I'm trying to do you a service by continuing to communicate with you, you know, throughout this process. But I really don't, most, most dealers won't even see you later. Bye. The money left our account. You're on your own. This is what he's saying to me. Okay. So the 27th, I believe it's Tuesday or whatever. Now, now we at like five, six business days at this point. Um, and I'm like, yo, like I'm calling my bank every day. I'm calling him every day. I'm like, can you, can you get with your, you know, with your finance manager? Can you, can we verify? Cause I'm not showing any pending. My bank is saying there's nothing pending. He's like just adamant about the funds left our account. So, you know, you just got you have to wait and whatever. I'm just like, man, is there any other way? Like, can you just wire me my money? Because I'm not, I'm telling you, I'm not getting this refund. And he's like, the only way I'll wire is if your bank will reject the refund that we sent you whenever it shows up. And I'm like, my bank, my, my credit card company saying that they can't do that because there's nothing to reject. I'm telling you, there's no refund there. And he keeps telling me the money left his, the account for the dealership. So long story short, on the 28th of February, you know, I'm talking to them and I'm like, yeah, and I'm, I call Harley Financial. They saying they never got a check for the payoff. Oh yeah. I'm getting that check sent out today. What? what? I was told the check was sent out on the 21st. Why is it now February 28th? And now you telling me you're going to send the payoff check off on the 28th. It's a whole seven days later. Somebody was supposed to send a payoff check on the 21st when they issued my uh, return for my card. So now y'all dragging your feet with that. So I guess, oh, yeah. And he also told me Brian went on vacation. So that's why Brian left that day. And I ain't never heard from him since because Brian got involved like he was going to fix something. And then he went on vacation and didn't even tell Dave about anything that was going on. So Dave starting from scratch. I had to fill him in on everything that was going on. Like what kind of general manager is that? You just leave it for somebody else here to pick up the pieces that you left behind. You know what I mean? So at this point, he he keeps saying, "Well, if they can't give me if they can't give me documentation saying that they'll reject the refund, then I, I can't wire you the money because I don't want to pay you twice." And I'm like, "You're not paying me twice because there's no refund coming to me." I'm telling you, the pending thing, the pending return fell off and it never came back, and it's not posting. This is eight business days in now. So, you know, I'm like, I'm confused. So now, you know, and then, so what happened was, um, I kept telling them my bank, my card, every, they keep saying that there is no refund. Like you, you guys either canceled the refund or y'all didn't post the funds. The first step ever to doing a refund is the authorization. You guys got the authorization on the 21st. To All right. So that's, that's what I've been going through so far. Just trying to get my money back. Still don't have my money back. So fast forward to now today, which is March the 1st, 2024. My dad is pretty much convinced that there is no refund. So he felt comfortable enough to tell to tell Mr. Dave, yo, Dave, how about this? Put a hold on my credit card for seventy four hundred. Wire my son the money straight to his account so he can have these funds from you guys. You know what I mean? And then if that money is not deposited in his account in a reasonable amount of time, release the hold on my credit card. Because we pretty much know that there's no return and you keep saying it is and you're just going to have us sitting here waiting. So he responds to my dad by saying, oh, well, if he's going to do that, why you don't just give him the money so he can go ahead and buy the other bike he wants? And my dad's like, what? What kind of response is that? Because that's letting y'all off the hook. The whole point of doing that is so y'all can give him his money back. You know what I mean? And then you can go ahead and realize that y'all didn't send him the return and release the hold on my card. I'm not going to give my son the money when we still waiting for y'all to give us the money. Like, we just going to put that on the back burner. Like, that don't even matter that much. No, I want my money back. I'm just trying to get y'all to give my money back because I know there's no return. I keep telling y'all. And all you keep saying is the money left your account. So he says, let me talk to the owner and see what I can do. 
calls me back about, I don't know, maybe an hour later. First, he sends me a text like, yo, I got some news for you. I'm going to give you a call in five minutes. He calls me with the finance lady on the phone on a, on a, on a, on a three-way. So just like I thought, somebody dropped the ball. All they had to do was go do their checks and verify what was going on. Because I'm telling them it's been enough time that went past now since the pending charge was there. and I mean, the pending return was there and fell off. That, that money should have landed somewhere now. It should be obvious that I didn't get the refund. So he goes and checks to see if they can do that whole credit card thing. And he's like, we found out what happened. We just changed credit card processing companies, right? Like last week, the money is in our bank account. After all this, me complaining, trying to get my money, the money he keeps saying left the bank account to be returned to me is in the dealership's bank account. It was never sent to me. It was never returned, right? And he's like, I'll tell you what, we're going to wire you the money immediately, and it should take effect on Monday. Case closed. Now, one time did he say, I apologize. I'm sorry. You know, I'm, I, you know, I'm sorry you had to go through all this. He started getting all cocky, like, oh, yeah, it was just our, our credit card processing. No, nah, bro, I've been telling you this whole time I don't, I, that you didn't give me the refund, and you keep telling me you did, and now y'all want to see that y'all messed up on y'all end and never sent the money, like my bank said. Y'all got the authorization but never made the funds available for me to have it, and I've been arguing with you for, like, two weeks now trying to get my money back. Now, all of a sudden, you want to say it all nonchalant. Oh, yeah, we, we, we changed processing companies for credit cards last week and, and something happened. And, uh, yeah, the money is still in our bank account. The money was in your bank account this whole time. If you would have took your time to go check like I was asking you and your finance lady would have go did her job. Instead, you just keep, oh, no, it's good. It's good. We sent it. We, no, y'all didn't. go. If you would double check, check your work that you thought you did right, you would see that that money is still in your account. Because once that pending charge fell off, that showed that y'all never made the funds available. So the funds was never available. If it was, it would have posted on my account. So that's bad business. You deal with Bayside Harley-Davidson, this is the stuff you can deal with. They change processing companies, so they keep telling you they gave you your money when they didn't. I mean, I had to follow the dispute with my dad on bank because I was convinced these people was never going to give me my refund. You know what I mean? So, And I'm not even going to tell them to cancel the dispute until I actually get my money. Cause I don't even have faith that that I'm still going to get, I'm going to get my money still at the dealing with these people. Right. So he never apologized, never said sorry and none of that for all the crap that I had to go through for them to finally get to the point to see that they messed up. And then he's like, Oh, I'll tell you one thing though. Uh, if I'm ever in the area, I got your number, man. I definitely take you guys out for dinner. That's a negative. I will never go to dinner with you. Don't ask me to go to dinner. No, you know what I mean? This is a horrible experience. You didn't mend any bridges by doing this. I had to fight for my money. You didn't you didn't come in and make things right for me. I still had to fight to make things right for me. So that's that's not the kind of relationship we have, my man. Don't ask to take me out nowhere. And then I asked him, like I asked him before, and he never checked on it. Listen, all everything I've been through, would y'all be able to compensate me as a consumer as a consumer from going through all this? I started this transaction in January twenty fifth. It's March 1st, and I'm just now getting my money back after all this stuff. Like, I mean, you think you can compensate me? Give me a, a, a King Tour pack or something for my new bike I'm trying to grab? Oh, I got to talk to the owner. I don't know about that. You know, I could take you off for dinner, but uh, I could talk. You said you got to talk to the owner. I asked you that last week. I was like, yo, if there's anything, can you see if you can work something out? Maybe give me some compensation or, or like maybe a King Tour pack or some lowers or something. Oh, I got to talk to the owner. You said that last week. So now you just like Brian. You're not a man of your word. You said you're going to talk to the owner. Ask him that question last week. I asked you a week later the same thing. And then you're going to say you got to talk to the owner again. You sound like Brian now. Oh, hold on. Oh, yeah, I got to check my inventory. See if you got a bike we can switch it over to. Oh, yeah, I got to get with the finance people to see about getting you your refund you know I mean? you say that four days in a row like come on bro i'm not a priority and you as a consumer going to base out harley you're not a priority
is on. I'm going to lock the handlebars out to the left. Everything on the dash dies, screen dies. Once I push it slightly back, everything turns back on. Handlebars are straight now, and I lock out to the right. Everything stays on. Blink along with the check engine light on. So when I, I did everything over the phone, so, and videos and pictures and everything, and when I first talked to him, I said, hey, what about the appearance of the bike? Anything with the appearance I need to be aware of? And he said, oh, just one rock chip on the fender right there. I'm like, okay, cool. All right, well, actually, it's more than one. There's one up here, too. All right, he only told me about the one. It's another rock chip right there. Another one right here. Um, and uh, so I'm, I'll just start with the front of the bike. Um, and like I said, the only thing I was made aware of was the one rock chip on the on the uh, front fender. Um, so starting from the front, everything looks, you know, used, good condition, you know. Then we get to the forks. I was not aware of the amount of rock chippage here on both forks. Not aware of that when I was going through the whole purchase process. And even that, I'm like, okay, normal wear and tear, but I would have liked to, you know, be aware of it. All right, I'm going to go through an overall thing last. Um, not only the rock chip leaks on the forks, we have some uh, some issue here where, as you can see, these these bell, whatever you call bell, whatever you want to call them, I guess they're bent. I don't know what's going on here, but... It's digging into the side of the fork. This is not normal wear and tear. Like, this scrape the finish right off, and it's digging into the, the fork cans, I guess you call them. So I don't know if it's because, actually, it's not even bent because this is not even touching it. Like, I got, like, damn, like, two quarters or more inch of play. It's not even touching it. So I don't know if something's loose in here. And if anything, this gets skinnier as you come down, so it should be further away from it. And it's like that on both sides. You can see here, it's scraping, scrape the paint right off. So these forks already look like you need some work done to get them reconditioned. All right, let's work our way back. And I'm gonna tell you right now, this bike was not cleaned or detailed at all. I'll go over all that stuff. Um, well, actually, while I'm here, let's go. This bike was not washed. All right, this is a lot of stuff on here that could be buffed off easily. Still have bug splatter. This is how I received this bike certified pre-owned coming off an enclosed trailer. This is how I got it. Dead bug splatter there. The bike is filthy. All right. If you look at, <clears throat> let's see here, what else? Uh, working my way back, working my way. So this is certified pre-owned, supposed to be thoroughly inspected and reconditioned. This speaker cover, does not match this speaker cover. This one looks brand new, like they replaced it. For whatever reason, they didn't replace this one. Now you can say it's nitpicky, but I'm just pointing out what I see. Um, this door here, his USB door, does not secure shut. Even when you push it down, it's supposed to lock in. You can just, you hit a bump, this thing's gonna go flying open. That doesn't click and secure shut. Um, it's like a, on the fuel tank here, you got two chips here, and you got a line here. This line that could be buffed out if they would have just buffed it. Let's see if you can see it. See that little scuff line? That could have easily been buffed out. Scratches all on this thing here. Alright. Like I said, these are not big deals, but I wasn't aware of it. And if I'm paying a $1,300 reconditioning fee, you know, I'll re recondition it. You know what I mean? But it looked like some oil or something splattered all under here. I can smell oil burning when I run the bike. All right, moving on back. As you can see, it's more rock chips on the back. You can see they touch it up with touch up paint. That's cool, not a problem. Um, but it's also, if you can see on the top of here, see those scuff marks? Those scuff marks on the bag. Those scuff marks all on the bag. That could easily be buffed and polished out, easily. 
but I paid a recondition fee and I'm getting this bike that wasn't clean at all. Um, working our way around. This docking hardware is rusty, rusted out. As you can see, it's just, they can simply just change those bolts out. I mean, if you're going around, and this was on the showroom floor. I don't understand how this is on the showroom floor. Um, my finger's dirty because I was touching this bike, even though it was delivered to me. Certified pre-owned, it's dirty as hell. I'll show you more of that. These bolts rusted out too. And it's like a whole bunch of caked up dirt on here. Um, we're going around this doesn't look clean at all it's like let me see me clean it up a little bit yeah, i don't know maybe i can polish it but uh all right going over it whoever had this bike they ain't really clean this on at all but as far as it being dirty um you see the frame here if I wipe it, let's see if I can get close enough. I think the frame, this bike wasn't clean at all. They couldn't even clean it before they gave it to me. Lever, clutch lever that could have easily been replaced. When you say recondition, what exactly are you reconditioning? He had something on his clutch lever that just wore it out. Um, let's see. So I can tell you right now, this is this is even more proof that they didn't bother to clean the bike. Cause I'm looking at it like this bike is there's so many scuffs and stuff on there that it could have easily see that scuff right there. That could have easily been buffed out. Attention to detail. Attention to detail. So I'm gonna take this seat off so you can see. Look at that. This is how my bike was delivered to me from a Harley dealership certified pre-owned bike that was sitting on the showroom floor. They couldn't clean none of this. They couldn't wipe none of this down. This bike was not going over. It wasn't thoroughly inspected. And I got more on that in a minute. Very dirty. All this noise when they decompress and compress when I press the front brake. So I'll try to get it on video for you. So I'm gonna roll the bike forward like this. Boom. That's compression and I roll it backwards. You can hear those clicking, this, this clanking noise. I'm gonna roll forward. And that's me squeezing the front brake and the front fork's decompressing. I don't know if it's a throat bearing or it's, these front forks are busted. I'm gonna roll backwards slow and I'm gonna hit the front brake. Boom, you can hear that. I'm gonna roll forward. I'm gonna hit the front brake. You can hear it. Instead of just the forks just decompression and everything being quiet, it's a lot of clunking going on. You hear that? So I don't know if it's brake related or fork related, but when I go forward and backwards, this thing is just clanking. Clank, clank, clank. Certified pre owned though, right? I paid $1,200, $1,300 for reconditioning fee, right? All right. Let's keep on going here. And I, and I mentioned this USB door is broken. It's supposed to be closed and locked and it just don't even click shut. It don't even lock. And, you know, like I said, these covers, this one looks gray. This one looks black. Get up close to it. I don't know if you can notice it or not, but small stuff. You know what I mean? That they can easily just replace. You could say it's nitpicking or you could say it's something easy to make it look reconditioned, which is the fee I paid for. All right, if you look at the brakes, the front brakes on there. Yeah, it's a nice little chip on the on the rim. Put some paint on that. Try to preserve that. Let's see, you see the front brakes? These front brakes are about half life, I would say. Maybe a little bit more, but these front brakes could have just easily been changed. Just so I can have fresh, fresh brakes. This certified pre-owned. I paid twelve, thirteen hundred for a reconditioning fee. See the pads. Now the back is the doozy. So I'm gonna sit this down for a second. 
the heck is that? Damage all on this. Damn, that's great. This is, you know, that's like bubble gum or something. The hell? Oh, couldn't clean that. And cigarette lighter not plugged in the cat. All right. You know, one last thing I want to document. I'm going to set the phone down so I can take these saddlebags off. Heck, as we look at the inside of the saddlebag, you can see that was not clean at all. But it's on your showroom floor. If you look here, the bike is dirty, not clean. Look at all this dirty, not clean. Look at the rim. Look at the back rim. Look how these, this is on the showroom floor, certified pre-owned, reconditioning fee, 110 point inspection. Watch this. That's how dirty the rim is. The brake dust is kicked on here. And this looks like it hasn't been cleaned since the damn bike. Like this brake dust is so thick on here, you can't even, it's the same thing on the front rim. Look how, look how I took the livery of this bike. Look how, dirty the rim is they couldn't even clean the bike before giving it to me for delivery the rims are atrocious you know what they did with that reconditioning fee threw some new tires on it that's it so they did threw new tires on it they ain't even bother to clean the rims but this is the kicker now i know for sure without a shadow of a doubt these brake pads are toast look how low the back brake pads are see if i can zoom in there for you Look at that. Back brake pads, low as hell. This this is certified pre-owned? This is this is what I'm paying a reconditioning fee for. You see it better right here. Back brakes. These back brakes need to be replaced. So guys, like I said, it's just documentation. Another thing. They couldn't handle this. They couldn't clean this up. They couldn't get this gooey stuff off of here, whatever this is. And, and put some tuck shut. I mean, it, you know what I mean? Certified pre on though, right? Look how dirty the frame is. Look at this right here. Get my finger on it. Look at this. Look at the difference. Look how dirty the bike is. Certified pre on Reconditioning fee. Harley Davidson described certified pre-owned is meticulously going through 110 point inspection. When you put the bike and turn the lock out to the left to put the kickstand down, everything cuts off. How how you miss that? The brakes, how you miss that? All you gotta do is visually inspect them. All right? How you miss this? Now if I'm buying a used bike that's not certified pre-owned, it's not reconditioned, I expect it to not be reconditioned. But if you sell me a certified pre-owned and your advertisement says reconditioned 100 point thoroughly inspected. Um, I expect a little bit more. So it's like, don't, don't, you know, come at me like I'm asking for too much. If you're putting your certified pre-owned name on it, I'm sure Harley Davidson would like for it to be better than what it is. Scuffs and scrapes, all, all this can easily be buffed out. I ain't asking for much. You know what I mean? I ain't asking for the world. He's asking to clean the damn bike. You know what I mean? Simple screw. Look rusty as hell. I'm pulling up. My bike look rusty. It's only three years old. Yeah, it's something simple, but it's something easy to fix. And the thing is, if I'm paying a reconditioning fee, you see, not cleaned at all. You know what I mean? I'm paying a reconditioning fee. If you don't charge me the reconditioning fee, I'll take that $1,300 and probably can get all this stuff. And then got to put it on, but, you know. So, guys, that's the video. 
they going to take the bike back to Virginia. See if they can make it right for your boy. And I'll, I'll, I'll keep you guys updated. Final video. 41 days. It took this whole... Pro it is now March the 4th. March 4th now. Finally got my refund. Finally got my return after fighting with these people saying that they never issued me the refund. They wound up wiring me the money after they really found out that they did not issue me the refund after telling me they did for like three weeks. So finally got my money back. From the time I made my purchase on this bike, my down payment and everything, it's been 41 days. 41 days it took for me to just get my money back and move on with my life. Because they refused to fix the bike that's been there for 14 days after I sent it back. The very next day after I got it, sent the bike back to the dealer. They had it for two weeks and didn't even touch or fix anything on the bike. Right? False promises, getting tossed around to 20 different people. Uh, you know what I mean? It took, I tell, the, I tell the general manager, Brian, I want my money back. It took him five days to even see about even giving me the refund. Right, I'm hoping the check is still on its way to Harley Financial to pay off my loan. I have to keep calling and checking on that to make sure that gets paid off. But uh, Brian, like on February what the February the 19th, he told me he was going to see about switching the orange stuff over to another bike, you know. But on February the the 19th or the 20th was the last time I spoke to him when he asked for my bank documentation that they didn't give me a refund for 400 dollars. And I never heard from him since. It's now March 4th. And I, he still never returned my emails, still never returned my calls, and still never said that he he, he found or couldn't find a bike to switch the orange stuff over to. So uh, Brian is not a man of his word. Um, so I, I don't I don't respect him as being a stand-up uh, general manager for any organization. Dave, Diamond Dave, he was the one that just kept kept forcing in my face that they sent me the money and I keep telling you they didn't send the money. He's trying to, oh, well, sometimes the car does this. I'm telling you, y'all didn't send me my money. And it took like two weeks down there fighting with him, telling him I didn't get my money back for him to finally realize that they never gave me my money back. So now that I finally have my money back, I'll go ahead and post this, this uh, video documenting, you know, everything that happened. Um, and on top of that, Dave's Diamond Dave's not a man of his word either, because I said something to him down there a week and a half ago about him seeing if the owner of the business, whatever, can approve compensating me for my troubles. 41 days I've been going through this, and I'm right back to square one now at the stressing. And he still didn't reach out to the owner to see if they can compensate me, whether it be a part for my new Harley, whether it be money, whether it be a daggone T-shirt. They, they, they can't offer anything after putting me through all of this. They can't, they can't offer me anything. Right. So that dealership's money is no concern to these employees. They can go home and sleep at night because it's not their money. It's not in their bank account or came out their bank account. Me, on the other hand, as a consumer, this is my money that's being tied up. This is my money that I work hard for that I'm, that, you know, I'm trying to buy a new bike. So, yeah, it's hard for me to sleep at night. I'm miserable. I'm around my family, my kids and everything. And all I'm worrying about is these people trying to steal my money. So it's no big deal to you guys because it's not your personal money. It's the, it's the, it's the business. It's the dealership's money. You know what I mean? So, and that dealership, probably, you probably got so much money in your bank account, it's, it's nothing to y'all. So, it's easy for y'all to just downplay, oh, yeah, whatever, whatever. Meanwhile, I had to keep calling. And the funny thing is, Diamond Dave told me, once they see the money leave their account, dealerships don't even have to talk to you anymore. They can just say, see you later. I told you what I told you. The money left your account. So, if he would have did what he's saying that most dealerships would do, you know, then they would have stopped communicating with me and I still would have never had my money. So by him telling me that, that's even more disrespectful because you're telling me that you shouldn't even really be giving me any explanation at this point because the money was shown leaving your account. The problem is it never entered my account. Y'all never made it available. So if you would have stopped talking to me like you saying dealerships usually do, where would we have been right now? I still wouldn't have my money and then you would have felt as though you have no reason to talk to me. So I had to keep calling and pressuring and bugging and being a squeaky wheel, keep every day being so annoying to you guys, right? Just like Rick Ross said, when I ask for my money, am I asking too much? I had to, I, I had to stress myself out in order just to get my money back. You know what I mean? So they now have this same bike for sale on their website, Bayside Harley Davidson, Portsmouth, Virginia. They now have the bike for sale for like twenty two nine, then at twenty three thousand. When I just bought the same bike for fifteen thousand and had to send it back because they had too many issues. So buy at your own risk. And deal with the dealership at your own risk. 
Because if that's the general managers having all these, uh, being a man of your word issues and, and flim flamming and flip flopping and not being sure on what's going on, imagine how that trickles down to everyone underneath them.